I'm glad to have you join us on the program from the National Assembly. I'm Ignatius Nkwo. Today we'll bring to you the plenary of 23rd of July 2020. That day, the Senate considered and approved the report of its other committee that investigated alleged misappropriation of 40 billion naira by the Interim Management Committee of the Niger Data Development Commission. That day, the Senate approved the recommendation of that committee that the Interim Management Committee of the NDDC be dissolved. In the last two months, the Nigerian media has been inundated with stories of alleged financial recklessness in the Niger Data Development Commission. Both chambers of the National Assembly investigated the allegations and the report of the Senate Adult Committee has been presented and its recommendations approved. This is a presentation of the report of the Adult Committee on the investigation of alleged financial recklessness in the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, submitted to the Senate this day. July 23rd, 2020. Mr. President, I will speak to this report because it's before every member here. The committee started its work on the 13th of May, 2020, and adopted a three uh, methods approach to the fact-finding. One was that the committee requested for written memoranda from various stakeholders. We also relied on external sources of information as well as public hearing. The major sources of information available to the committee is the Central Bank of Nigeria, that provided us with record of all financial transactions of NDDC between October 2015 and May 2020. We also got similar information from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation that detailed out financial transactions of the NDDC. And finally, we got similar information from the Niger Delta Development Commission itself. Distinguished colleagues, on page 36 of this report shows us the amount of money that NDDC paid out as transactions between 2015 and 2019, which amounted to 1 trillion and 34 billion naira over a period of 2015, October to 2019, 31st of May. Mr. President, on page 37, we have concentrated on the time bell that constitutes the terms of reference of this committee, which is to look at the activities of the IMC. And the IMC started work October 29th, 2019 to May 31st. During this period, the NDDC received a total revenue inflow of 74665505840 Naira from three different sources, oil company contribution, statutory allocation from the Federation account, and internally generated revenue from tender and bidding fees for different assignments, totaling about 74.7 .7 billion in income. As I said to you, the information were obtained from Central Bank, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the Niger Delta Development Commission. Distinguished colleagues, for the period under review on page 40, the breakdown you have there is exactly 
what the NDC spent during this period. And it is spread over different categories of expenditure, which we have analyzed item by item in order to throw more light into the integrity of those transactions. You will also notice on page 40 that we have presented three columns of figures because those are the sources, three different sources of information on those transactions. And of course, we noticed um, discrepancies in the total amount from different sources of account records for the same transactions, which raises the issue of reconciliation of the accounts of the NDDC so that we can have a uniform uh, figures since they represent the same time and the same organization. Distinguished colleagues, from page 41 up to up to page 71, page 41 to 71, captures the analysis of expenditure categories in the summary table that I refer to in page 40, namely projects, uh, <clears throat> projects and activities that are listed in medical checkup, uh, things like COVID expenditure, things like lesser fever expenditure, and different activities within the NDDC. The details are there for us to look at. And the analysis of this expenditure shows various kinds of um, process errors and infractions, the details you are able to look at. In chapter four, on page 72, we also did a detailed analysis because we found out that substantial payments over this period in the NDDC was made to and through staff of the organization. In a, apart from their statutory salary payments, they were they featured very heavily in several program expenditure activities that uh, ordinarily will raise questions about how that organization runs its affairs. Um, in this place, we also noticed that the NDDC paid its staff several kinds of allowances that ordinarily one will be curious why staff of the organization is taking this organization. If you look at page 73, the summary of payments in NDDC that was made to staff and through staff is provided on page 73. And all these expenses were between October 2019 and May 2020. If you look at page 73, for example, medical checkup consumed a sum of 4.9 billion that was paid to staff of the organization. Um, you see also at the bottom of that page, COVID-19, the amount of money that was paid through staff. Impressed, tour duty allowances, stakeholders engagement, and so on and so forth. Overseas travel, uh, public communications, uh, and so on and so forth. Conferences, condolences, and overseas travel that was largely paid when the country was on lockdown 
and no international flight was coming in and out of Nigeria. We saw payments on scholarship that were paid to staff of the NDDC. Uh, some of those scholarships were actually foreign scholarships that was paid to staff of NDDC. All of these payments happened between April and June of this year when the nation was on lockdown. <clears throat> this summary you see here, on subsequent pages of chapter four, you will see the detailed breakdown of those kind of expenditure that we consider curious and needing further explanation. Of course, during our public hearing, distinguished colleagues, we put this question to the management of the NDDC. They had their explanations, but those explanations um, do not reflect the, uh, the need for them. <clears throat> Distinguished colleagues, on the basis of our findings from the financial records of NDDC, which I've just narrated to you in chapters three and four, we were able to identify in chapter five what we consider to be significant issues that arose from those findings so that lessons can be learned and corrections can be made so that in future such occurrences do not happen because a normal organization is supposed to function in the direction of its mission and a vision which we found very wanting. The first issue, which is the foundation, is the enabling law that established the NDDC. And we found here that there were non-compliance with the provisions of that act in several aspects. Number one is in the functions of NDDC. In the course of our review, we saw several payments in the life of IMC 1 and 2 to suggest that the core mandate of NDDC was not strictly being followed because those payments do not speak to the purpose for which NDDC was established. We noticed that. Number two on page 98 is that we saw unimplemented accountability mechanism that was provided in the law. The NDDC was supposed to have a monitoring committee to be set up by the president along with the board of directors of the agency. This monitoring committee is not operational. <clears throat> it was supposed to have an advisory council comprising the governors of the nine Niger Delta states to provide some oversight into that agency. <clears throat> There's no record anywhere that these two uh, bodies that the law statutorily provided for was happening. In 513, the agency by law was supposed to bring up its budget not later than 30th of September of every year. <clears throat> this is not happening. And the quarterly and annual report that the parliament is supposed to receive from the NDDC is not happening. Uh, so these are areas of infractions of the law that set up the agency. These are accountability and transparency mechanisms provided by the act to check the kind of excesses we saw in chapters three and four. But because they are not in place, these excesses have become cultural to the institution. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, on page 99, we all know the story of the dissolution of the board of the NDDC. This inquiry by the National Assembly and the ongoing forensic audit uh, provides an opportunity to return to compliance with the act establishing the NDDC 
as far as constitution of the board is concerned. There is no point going back into what went wrong. But the exercise that is, we are talking about this, this day is an opportunity for us to go back to the law and you know, operate the agency according to the law. We also note that the president has substantial powers in section 23 to intervene in the areas of programmatic intervention of the NDDC. And on this note, and given the level of disenchantment against that commission by the people of the Niger Delta and Nigerians as a whole, we think this is also an opportunity for the president to enter into a covenant with the new board on what their task will be, at least in the three years remaining of his tenure as president of the Federal Republic, so that NDDC can be seen to have performed under his presidency. Mr. President, on page 100, we saw the IMC performance as a major issue. And item 521, the top of that page, we found out that the fiduciary record of the tenure of the IMC since October 2019 has not shown any evidence of performance enhancement efficiency or prudence in the application of resources committed to the NDDC. The NDDC Interim Management Committee should therefore be dissolved to pave way for the constitution of the Board of Directors in accordance with the Act. The ministerial oversight has been consistently weak and inadequate, therefore making the Ministry of Niger Delta culpable of negligent supervision. Distinguished colleagues, <clears throat> on page 101, we saw that the independent forensic audit that was ordered by the president is a very, very positive action, but it will amaze us that the state of implementation of that forensic audit is at very, very rudimentary stages of recruitment of auditors in the eight months of the existence of the IMC, the purpose of which was to look at the forensic assessment of the agency. We therefore believe that it may take a longer way if the, uh, the forensic audit is left to the discretion of the management. Many issues were raised uh, in the course of this work, the non-compliance with uh, Bureau for Public Procurement for approvals or exemption from um, the procedure, a lot of that was noticed in the course of our investigation. And the quotes you have there are testimonies in the course of our public hearing where the minister himself said a lot of these contracts were, were done in aberration of the Procurement Act. <clears throat> 103. Page 103, 525. Budget, discipline, and culture. The NDDC does not operate on the basis of budgets. They operate on the basis of cash accounting. Once the cash is available, they spend according to the discretion of management, not according to the provisions of the budget. Because we have asked the management of our NDDC to provide for our committee a budget performance report. We asked for a budget performance report that details out how much was budgeted for and how much the agency has spent so far. As at the time of writing this report, that information was not provided because um, either it's not available or it is not readily given. But the details are also provided in the course uh, of this report. Um, we notice in their procurement, Mr. President, colleagues, um, a lot of contract splitting. A huge project will be broken down into small bits and allocated to similar contractors in some cases, several contractors in several cases, and ostensibly 
for anybody who has been in a, in a huge organization, this is definitely in order to make sure that those expenditures fall within approval limits of management without necessary recourse to higher approval authorities. The tables following that section details out a sample, a sample of the evidence of such contrast splitting. And all of these things happen in the IMC, page 107, and I would like to highlight the situation of internal controls and audit system within the NDDC. Because you wonder how could this type of financial operations be happening in an organization with internal controls and internal audit process. We found out that um, the audit system within the NDC is very weak and complicit. And even the external audit report that we received is contains virtually no information for such an organization. One trillion in five years. One trillion and 34 billion in for, for five years, 2015 to 2020. Uh, Mr. President, the payment of staff for program activities is a major practice, and this does not lead to transparency and audit trail. Uh, that is contained in page 108. <clears throat> Mr. President, on the basis of the analysis of records and the assessment of the issues which represent the institutional challenges of NDDC, we came up with some recommendations. And it is good to underscore the fact that in view of the controversies around this NDDC investigation, we had to underscore in our public hearing that this exercise is a legitimate responsibility of the parliament to make sure that agencies of government are prudently utilizing resources appropriated to them and also delivering on the dividends that they are supposed to, to provide. And we made it very clear that this exercise is not an exercise at witch hunting or to uh, blame gaming but to make sure that the NDC, NDDC money work for the people of the Niger Delta. On the basis of which, distinguished colleagues, I go to page 110, and as I go through <clears throat> these recommendations, the first recommendation is that the committee is of the opinion that a reconsideration of the executive oversight of the NDDC needs to be examined. Uh, and for purposes of consistency and equality of policy, there's need to review the inconsistencies and difference in APEC's control of these development commissions. We believe that the NDDC should be reconsidered to report directly to the presidency as it used to be, uh, rather than allow it to be managed from other sources. We said that the absence of a board of directors at NDDC created a major lacuna of oversight, which the Minister of Niger Delta could not fill, and provides a culpable neglect of supervision and could not function effectively as a board would have done, uh, because ministries are known for policies, while agencies are known for operations under a governance system that is established by law. Um, inauguration of other accountability mechanisms. This is the need not just to stop at the uh, institution of the board, but the monitoring committee and the advisory committee should also be concurrently uh, you know, implemented so that there are multiple layers of oversight uh, in order to ensure that the money of this agency work for the people of the region. Uh, Mr. President, improvement of governance process is there. These are recommendations basically for institution uh, upgrading of the institution. 
On the financial accountability and framework review, we found out that restoration of a budget-less system will help the Niger Delta Commission to do a better job of service delivery. The practice of spending without a framework of a budget and a plan against which expenditure is being made is not helpful to the NDDC. And no wonder, we are, we are not surprised that the 81 billion or so that was spent between October and now is not really development oriented. And that is why we think that the performance of budget procedure reform is a necessity. Mr. President, the initiation and supervision of the forensic audit. We believe, as a committee, that in order to ensure that the forensic audit achieves the purpose for which it is set up and inspire confidence in the operational and financial processes of the NDDC, oversight of the audit should be transferred to the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation. This will guarantee independence, it will guarantee credibility, transparency, and professionalism in the output of the exercise. Furthermore, the committee recommends that Mr. President, with advice from the Auditor General of the Federation, should appoint a renowned internationally recognized forensic auditor to carry out this exercise so that the outcome will be unanimous and it will not be subject to controversy or compromise. Uh, Mr. President, we believe that the strengthening of the procurement process is, is very, very crucial because you can have a lot of money coming into an organization if the exit gate in terms of projects and procurement is not well managed by procedures and processes and uh, oversight to ensure effectiveness, we are going to li likely suffer the kind of hemorrhage that is taking place in the NDDC. We found out that in a lot of cases where unjustifiable payments were made to staff of the NDDC, uh, they should be made to refund these monies because what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, in the case, for example, COVID relief 19, the agency spent 1.49 billion in payments, various payments to members of staff in various categories, ranging from 10 million to 600,000 naira by individual staff. Uh, and this is, this is on record, it's there. We, 10 million to 600,000 per staff. And the total amount for 1,400 and so staff boils down to 1.4 billion. This kind of payments we believe should be refunded by the management of the uh, IMC and such refund should go into the NDDC account, not the Federation account. That was an error on the part of the committee. It is the money should go back into the account of the NDDC and not into the Federation account. Please correct that on your paper. Mr. President, there are serious process challenges in the NDDC, institutional challenges in the NDDC, and Chapter 6.4 of this recommendation has recommended a review of operation processes, a review of financial and accounting processes, review of human policy, instituting a performance-based organization, and the enhancement of internal and external audit capacities. But all these internal review processes is best done under a formally constituted board and management with the operationalization of the accountability mechanisms in, in, in terms of the uh, monitoring committee and the advisory council. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, last but not the least is the need to review the corporate social responsibility policy of the NDDC. 
a lot of money has been spent on condolences, stakeholders' engagement, community interventions. A good example is two or three staff take some huge sum of money and they call it to give petrol to community. <laughs> and it's all there. <laughs> it is good for an organization to, to do corporate social responsibility, to want to make its impact felt within its operational communities. But there is need for a policy framework that does not leave this in the realm of discretionary uh, abuse of those that are operating the system. Mr. President, in conclusion, the committee noted that it is difficult to find a correlation between Niger Delta community development and the cash invested in the zone. Uh, it, there is a far gap of value for money. And therefore, the question was raised at the public hearing by a number of activists, NGOs, civil society people, and other members of the public present. Indeed, with the recurring theme, it could be taken as a common source of agitation among the people at present. Continued cash injection into the Niger Delta challenge issue has not worked under various IMCs, two of them so far. It may be useful at this juncture for government to intervene by stepping down the IMC uh, arrangement, thereby helping them to leave the stage for a properly constituted board and with specific mandate to address the pains of the people of the Niger Delta. The time has come when the money of the Niger Delta must work for the people of the Niger Delta. Distinguished colleagues, I so submit. Let me um, commend you for a very thorough, very professional uh, job. We didn't expect anything less. And I congratulate uh, all the members of the ad hoc committee also. Uh, distinguished colleagues, we have listened to the presentation by the chairman of the ad hoc committee on the alleged recklessness uh, in the Niger Delta financial system. Now we have uh, the opportunity to make our comments before we eventually uh, look into the recommendations of the, of the committee. There's no doubt, Mr. President, from this report, we have seen financial recklessness misappropriation of public funds, deliberate attempts to undermine the purpose of establishing the NDC. Niger Delta is a very important zone to this country. That is the bedrock of our work as a nation. You recall in the, last, in the seventh Senate, when we went on tour of Niger Delta, we saw people living in abject poverty I can compare their situation with what I saw in Soweto, in South Africa. Therefore, I hold I held the view that having a commission like this will improve the well-being of the people. More importantly, when you have people of that zone who are managing the affairs of the commission, which was entrusted to them to improve the well-being of their people. Mr. President, there's no need to pretend about this. This is a deliberate attempt to put the people of Niger Delta in perpetual slavery and, and, and penury. Mr. President, from what we have seen of this report, you don't need to be an accountant to know when people have made managed public funds. Mr. President, this is one report that must not die. And I take a look at our nation. We all claim to be Christians and Muslims. We believe in the Bible, we believe in the Quran. But when you look at this kind of a report, you feel very bad. Why are we here? We are here to add value to our nation. This report is painful because for those of us, Mr. President, who have been in the struggle for the emancipation of the people, under your leadership, under President Muhammadu Buhari, if we cannot stop minimize corruption, then this country has no future. We have watched on live TVs what has been going on as far as NDDC is concerned. We have seen 
corruption being displayed at the highest level. Integrities of individuals have been put to test. As my brother Senator Smart at the EMU has said, the mantra of this administration is to fight corruption. But what do we have? We have corruption fighting back. 4.5 billion was spent in a day in NDDC. 4.5 billion. And the most astonishing part of this is that the expenditure upon which this fund is predicated are frivolous in nature. And that goes to show that it's a huge amount of money coming from the oil companies to NDDC, coming from the federal government from NDDC, coming from the derivation account to NDDC, running to several billions of naira. And I'm made to understand that what comes from the petroleum companies are in dollars. At the point in time, there was a reconciliation that was done that has to do with amount that was paid by the oil companies, amount that was received by NDDC, and amount due that must be remitted by these oil companies. And after the whole reconciliation, the petroleum company decided to pay the difference, which is in millions of dollars. I don't know if this is contained in this report. Mr. President, there is no game saying about it. There is need for us to reposition the board. When I watched um, the special advisors with President Niger Delta in China on TV a few minutes, a few, a few days ago, he said that the law establishing NDDC was the first law in the history of our National Assembly where the President vetoed. Well, the president was vetoed by the National uh, Assembly. It therefore means that there was a general consensus by the generality of Nigerians on the need to come to the plight of the people of Niger Delta. And it was based on, on the basis of that consensus that that law was passed by this uh, National uh, Assembly. Mr. President, I believe that Nigeria has been good to the people of Niger Delta. What we are seeing here today is quite, is quite sad and it is a clear reflection of what we call a theater of solitude. This is the inhumanity of Niger Delta to the people of Niger. And I believe very strongly to the President that whether we like it or not, what is happening in NDDC today it's a clear reflection of the hatred of man to man. With the President, when we were doing the PIB in the last Senate, we divided ourselves into different uh, committees, Mr. President. And we went on a tour, an on the spot assessment of the state of affairs in, of the people of these oil producing communities. Mr. President, some of us were in the water for close to three hours. Marfa and Senator Lashadura and Senator Geshom, uh, Geshom Basi. Mr. President, it beats your imagination that the air that, is, that they breathe in this area is different from what we breathe in Abuja or any other, any other community. They live in, they live in squalors. No access to electricity, nothing. And here we are, you find a commission spending one point something trillion in three or four or four years on lesser fever and, 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 and all kinds of, of dubious, 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 and uh, spurious uh, Mr. President, my challenge is, I'm happy that the President has said that he's waiting for, for, for a report of uh, investigation. This, is the, this will be the first test, Mr. President, if he's sincere with the fight against corruption, which I know that he's very, very sincere. It is good to call a spade a spade. Mr. President, if you had watched the public hearing a few days ago, with the kind of contents in this report, 
Why won't the man faint? Why won't the man faint? With the kind of contest in this report, the man was just asked, why did you pay 1.5 billion on palliative to staff? Staff that were at home doing nothing. He said, no, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not 1.5. It is only 1.3. What is the difference between 1.3 and 1.5? And that you have to pay yourself first before you pay for that. And I will sit down and on our side and see and this is happening. It's not possible, Mr. President. Mr. President, we I believe that as a Niger Delta, I don't believe that all hope is lost. It is good to do the right thing, no matter how late it is, than not to do anything at all. Posterity, I believe, will be fair to you if the right thing gets done now. Mr. President, if you look at the contents of this report, nobody can fault its content. Nobody can fault its content. The only issue I have with this recommendation is that it is not as strong as it should be. If you are saying somebody should reform money, it should be so clearly stated. And Senator, uh, Senator Solomon has said something here. Mr. President, if we had, if we had allowed people to use their discretion in running NDDC the way they have run it, run it down and out of purpose, then a time has come where we can also use the strength of the law to streamline the workings of NDDC. Nobody has talked about the master plan of Niger Delta. Nobody talks about it. I know when the last uh, MD of uh, the last MD of uh, uh, came for came on screening. He was blabbing about master master plan. But here we are. Once it, once 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 they are cleared from here, the next thing is is uh, they do they do whatever they like. When you sit down and you drive contracts of two thousand contract pieces of contracts at 49, 49 million naira. And then and this so gone. Mr. President, we must also blame the National Assembly. We must also blame ourselves. Because this is a clear case of lack of oversight. This is a clear case of lack of oversight, Mr. President. So we must also place some level of responsibility on the National uh, Assembly. We have not done well as regards, uh, as regards uh, oversighting this, uh, this agency. It is good to call a spade. It's paid. I'm very sad today to be a member of this parliament because, and to be a Nigeria, because, Mr. President, we are leaders of a country. <clears throat> and we see this, we see this kind of report, these things happening. Mr. President, I'm sad because this should not be happening in this country. Particularly, this will not be happening to the region where this agency is charged to, under, uh, to oversee. It's the region, just like the first speaker has said, that is the bedrock of our economy. It's a region where we have agitation. It's a region where we have insecurity. And despite that, we have a law, we have resources from several sources, and we can see how it is being used. It is a saddest one to see this is happening, and that nothing urgently is being done. In Asia countries, just like the first speaker said, people should be killed for doing this kind of thing, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. President, they should be killed because people are dying by, as a result of the consequences of their action, Mr. President. Mr. President, this is obvious corruption that Kawa cannot see. Because, like, it's not, like, like what is here as a medical doctor, I cannot accept it. They talk about spending billions on Lassa Viva. The Niger Delta region in Nigeria is not the region where we have the majority of Lassa Viva. They talk about spending 3 or something billion on COVID. COVID-19 epicenter in Nigeria is Lagos. COVID epicenter is in Canada and Abuja. And this kind of money is not spent. What is the money being spent on, Mr. President? And when we look at it, obviously, obvious corruption. Breaking that, you want to buy kits. The procurement law is that that thing should be bought, should be procured once, because it's the same kind of it. But you broke it down into 47, 47 million to enable contracts to be awarded. So, Mr. President, just like the last speaker, then several speakers have said, I want to urge that this report should be implemented by the President of Nigeria with immediate effect. The report has said the President needs to, to disband the IMC and constitute a board. And we should insist on this. Nigeria should insist on that. Mr. President, the report has said that the agencies 
does not have standard operating procedure for finance, for operations, this needs to be instituted by the board. And more importantly, the IMC, on the minister, claim on, on, in the, uh, uh, which we saw publicly, that there is forensic auditing going on. This report says nothing is going on. We have seen very serious mismanagement on NNDC. And um, it is time for us to take serious action. It is not just enough for us to sit down here, debate the content of this report, and then we send it to the executive. We have to follow up and ensure that uh, our recommendations are implemented to the letter. We have a committee charged with the responsibility of monitoring you know, the Niger Delta. And to me, something must have gone wrong. If all these infractions are happening and nothing has been reported to the Senate, till we get this ad hoc committee to vote in the oversight. Mr. President, we have seen a lot of money being spent on things that are intangible. We expect Niger Delta to be almost the same development with the world today, going by the amount of money that is being pumped into the Niger Delta. The 30% derivation is going into Niger Delta. Mr. President, the whole purpose of set, setting up the NADC is to emulate the hardship being encountered by the people in the Niger Delta as a result of exploitation of oil. A ministry for Niger Delta was created by President Musa Eradua to also assist in the development of the Niger Delta. All companies are spending so much money, but yet, Mr. President, when you look at the child, you don't see anything but poverty and misery, as Senator Ademi has said. So, time has come when we should take drastic action to ensure that the resources of the Niger Delta is being used to develop the region. If you look at Section 88 of the Constitution, Subsection 2B, which says, expose corruption, inefficiency, or waste in the execution or administration of laws within its legislative competence and in the disbursement or administration of funds appropriated by it. I don't think there is anything as classical as what has been done by this committee. To me, the spirit and letter of that provision of the Constitution has been brought to life by what the committee has done with this report. And I think, going forward, it will be very, very fundamental that the Senate looks at this as a template, as a model, so that there are so many other segments of our laws or sectors of our economy that will require this kind of thorough job to be done. And I think this is a wake-up call for all the various committees that are handling various sectors of our economy. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, what is important for us to take note of is the fact that the laws have been put in place to guide our intervention, especially in this very, very important you know, region of our country. And as it is being said, we have to ask ourselves, is the law definitely meeting the objective for which it was set up? I think the comments from most of the speakers show clearly that the people of the Niger Delta, the common ones, the poor people, the Nekunus, they are being shortchanged. And like distinguished Senator Albert said, this is man's inhumanity to man. Where people are finding it very difficult to live the most basic of life. And then some people are coming to give contract on a disease that is not the major problem, I think it's really very sad. And definitely we must do something about this. The saddest part of what we are discussing is that there is no any demonstration of concern 
from the people of Niger Delta. Remember, this evil has been going on for long. It's not just from 2015 to now, no. The period preceding 2015 may have maybe more deadlier report. It is truly sad because this issue is a typical Nigerian problem. A typical Nigerian problem in the sense that the Niger Delta Development Commission is seen as a honey pot by most Nigerians, not only Niger Delta, by most Nigerians. And Mr. President, I want to put it more succinctly that every member of the management committee of Niger Delta has a godfather. And this godfather sits at the highest level of policy making circumference in Abuja. They receive returns because when you want to treat an ailment, you must trace the root of that ailment. Are we thinking that what we are saying after today may not be just a mere television show? Because at the end of the day, every godfather will want to protect his own. And that is how, if we are not careful, this report may be swept under the carpet. I want to say with a lot of regret that those of us who are from the Niger Delta, particularly those of us who have been here for some time, it's unfortunate that we do not have anything you know, to say good about the NDDC as far as the government of our states or the Niger Delta region is concerned. I represent my state and my constituency in this Senate. And those South Central that district is the reason why those states is classified as Niger Delta states. Mr. President, just like others we say here, the three local government areas out of my seven that produce oil and gas, particularly Orion local government area, Mr. President, year in, year out, nothing. There is not one single project of NDDC. But you see, these things have been going on. And what you get here is all blackmail and blackmail. And today, what has been shown by this report is to first and foremost vindicate those who have been, of course, those of us who are from that region who have been denied development by the NDDC. And of course, this thing that is even thick in the air, that what is happening there has to do with other extraneous persons. Well, we are going to get to some of these things in time. Mr. President, I want to say that this report, one of the things it has exposed, is the very weak governance structure of the NDDC. And then, of course, the lacuna that exists in their, in their you know, establishment act. My colleagues have already mentioned that we need to go back to that act. One of the greatest disservice or leakage that we have seen in that act is the non-inclusion of the state reps, the commissioners. The person representing those states has nothing to do with the management committee, with the management board. That is what you see. So you have this handful of people, five or six people who now constitute the management board, who award this contract to themselves in total negligence of the states that are supposed to be developed. Very recently in the SNA, we passed the North, uh, North East Development Commission. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, I want to say the achievement that we have seen in that inter interventionist agency is far better than what we have recorded in NDDC over the years. And that is why some of us who are from the region will feel very bad that NDDC has not been able to meet up with the expectations or the objectives. In 2018, we were reviewing the budget performance of NDDC. The SY management board, when they came before the committee, it was a thing of regret that 5.32% was what was capital budget performance in my state. And I asked, why is it that low? You had a budget of over 9 billion for my state. Only 5.2. He said, well, your governor said we should not do projects. I went back and asked my governor, my governor did not know anything about it. He tells you they give you different reasons and blackmail people. Just like somebody said, the minister said a few days ago 
that the contracts in NDDC, they have been given to legislators. And the press and the, and of, of the speaker of the House of Representatives has challenged him. If I ask for projects in my state for NDDC and they are not done, and the reason for being here is for me to bring development to my constituency, and when you don't do it, you come and say, I have asked. If we have to facilitate projects, is it not our responsibility to so do? And shamelessly, the, the commission and the ministry and those who have been charged with responsibility, they have not done anything about it. And they are, they are talking, they are um, giving wrong information, positive wrong information in public domain. Mr. President, I want to say that the issue of contract award has been a blackmail. By the time we go deeply into it, you will find that this one has been a blackmail. Because these contracts have not been meeting with the needs assessment of the states. Nobody has gone to the states to go and ask, what do you want? Is it road you want? Is it school you want? Is it water you want? Hey, nobody, the commission from, 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 uh, from establishment, go and check, nothing has happened because no needs assessment. I have seen that because this assembly, this senate, we have really not been doing the needful when it comes to financial audits of these institutions. This commission, we must put it, by the time we are doing our amendment, that every year before they bring their budget here, they must bring the audit report of the, of the preceding year. That is the condition. When we pass it, the general has looked at their books and we are satisfied in this Senate, then that is when we will look into their budget for the succeeding year. Otherwise, we are still going to have accumulation of all this rubbish, of all this corruption, only for us to come here and be exercised our emotion. We must get their audit report every year before we pass their budget. So, CDA, this is my submission. Mr. President, when me and you had to, when the president then, Obasanjo, refused to sign this bill, including the 13% derivation, we came back and vetoed his rejection of that. We were doing that because we sympathize with the suffering of the people of the Niger Delta. And we hoped by passing those bills that there would be an improvement. At that time, I happened to be a member of the Committee on Environment. And we took a tour of the entire Niger Delta. Mr. President, that was the first time I was coming in contact, direct contact, with actual abject poverty and penury. And so when we came back and made a report, both the House and the Senate willingly passed this bill. Unfortunately, the whole essence of passing those bills have been defeated, Mr. President. When we passed on this floor, screened and passed and approved the constitution of the board of directors of the Niger Data, and the minister went ahead single-handedly and appointed the IMC, I knew we were heading to where we are now. The IMC, I looked at chapter 4 of this report. Mr. President, chapter 4 of this report captured all the iniquities that have been committed by the IMC in this entire report. And Mr. President, like other colleagues have said, if we are fighting corruption, the best way to fight corruption is to prevent it from happening. Consciously, 44 billion that was lying in the central bank was expended on non-developmental projects. The essence of that uh, agency is to develop the Niger Delta. Now, even if every management staff or all the staff in NDDC have cancer, cancer is about the most serious a terminal element that we know, they won't be spending 4.9 billion to treat cancer, even if it is cancer. And so, Mr. President, this is obvious and blatant daylight robbery of the people of the Niger Delta. And it is unfortunate that this is being carried out by Niger Delta themselves, because from the minister to the IMC, all of them are from Niger Delta. And so they're shortchanging their own people. 
And Mr. President, I believe that this report, and I agree with uh, those who say that the recommendations, we need to strengthen them up. We need to make them stronger. The recommendation are a bit watery. Because on a serious issue like this, we should use this so that it will act as a deterrent to other people who will come in. Because from what I've seen, every person who struggles and aspire to go to serve as a director or whatever in the Niger Delta, they are looking more at the money, not at the service that they need to provide to the people of the Niger Delta. And so let us again look at the act as suggested by a lot of colleagues here and tighten, it, tighten up the loose ends that exist in that, in, in that act so that we will not find ourselves in a situation where next time an interim management board will be appointed. Every Niger Delta is supposed to be so keen to see to the performance of NDDC, which is an intervention agency. Unfortunately, unfortunately, those that were opportune to uplift their people are the ones putting their own to the marriage of poverty that they are today. And I want to comment on the recommendations of this ad hoc report especially on the procurement processes. The minister went on air in the public domain to say that most of these contracts, or 60% of these contracts, is given to the National Assembly members. But from this report, we can see it vividly where such contracts have gone. But as I said, if you want justice, if you want fairness, if you want equity, you must come with clean hands. This National Assembly cannot be absorbed from the blames of what transpired in the Niger Delta Commission. And the only way we can check, even if this law is reviewed, and the same kind of things are happening, without the right oversight, this problem will continue to go like that. So we must check ourselves. We must be able to stand to defend our actions everywhere. Uh, big brother, Senator Aditundi from Bikiti. I've looked at the report from beginning to the end, and particularly chapters four and five, show what I will describe as a picture of a scene of Brazil looting spree by a group of people thinking that the money must be exhausted within a period of time as if there will be no funding or resources at the end of the day. And the evidence of this also undermines the purpose for which the commission was set up by the name of the commission, Niger Data Development Commission, from the billions of Naira taken away by way of uh, contract splitting, by way of studious spending, by way of breach of uh, procedure in terms of procurement, and for very dubious exercises, particularly in terms of uh, communications, so clearly that there appear to be a failure of even the commission as to the name given to it to be a developmental uh, agency. But then, it calls to question the problem of governance that we have in Nigeria. Why do we have a commission set up by law having its own governance structure. And for the same purpose too, you also have a ministry as a branch of the executive for the same purposes. Aside the question of duplicity, in terms of purpose, in terms of even the bureaucracy itself, does it really serve the purpose? And this permeates 
particularly almost all parts of our governance structure. As a National Assembly, we need to look at commissions created by law and see that they are really autonomous in their function and be responsible to the president through its own organ rather than subject it to another layer of supervision that allow it. This report is an indictment on all of us. This report is an indictment on the leadership, on the governor, government, on all of us. Because we are the trustees of the people. And it is under our watch that all these malfeasance occurred. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, there's a defining moment in the history of this country at this moment. Either we want to raise the bar of this country or we want to continue to sink it into the cesspool of maggots. I'm really, really upset. To me, this is just a, a tip of the iceberg. NDDC is just one of many. The whole, the whole thing stinks of corruption. The system stinks of corruption. NDDC is just one of many. There are so many other agencies similar to NDDC. And Mr. President, I must applaud the chairman of this committee that did a very thorough job and all the members of this committee. And I must also applaud that you allowed my distinguished colleagues, Mata Diemi and Albert Bassi, to express passionately, because it's long overdue in this chamber, how they felt. That's the way we should be feeling right now. I got so emotional thinking about my people, the sufferings of people out there. People are suffering. Mr. President, this is what happens when there's absolutely impunity in any country. So what has happened in NDDC, what is happening around, there's a cause for it. It's lack of impunity. When we don't take people accountable for what they are given, when we don't jail them, when we don't take action on them. We are responsible to approve annual estimate. The law didn't stop there. The law says we should do oversight. And in any budget session, there is budget proposal and last year's budget performance. I cannot see and I cannot understand the wisdom for this parliament to approve this budget in the period of five years without going through the budget appraisal. Then what are we doing here? The minister has confessed that the 2019 budget was not approved. In the act, there is a limit to what you can spend if your budget is not approved. Mr. President, how can a reasonable man incur an expenditure on overseas trip when the country is on lockdown? It's sad and it's unfortunate. Mr. President, in any organization, there is a mandate establishing the organization. And if we want to approve budget, we have to study the mandate and make sure what we are approving is within the ambit of the law. I think the problem we have is simple. And simple in the sense that the dramatists that are calling themselves the IMC have not addressed the issues that they are supposed to address and address Nigerians on what they have done, what they are doing. But the problem we have is, as part of the IMC, you have a former member of the House of Reps and you have somebody who was a senator. And because they know that the parliamentarians are not popular, so the best thing they will do to go away and to run away from the essence of the investigation is to throw it at the National Assembly and say, oh, 60 percent of the projects have been awarded to the National Assembly members. And so Nigerians and everybody forget the essence and begin to lampoon the National Assembly. But they have failed and have forgotten that they need to tell Nigerians how they would have spent 
at 1 billion within October to today. They forgot to tell Nigerians how they spend money when people were not traveling, when the skies were shut down, when there was no body traveling, no car, no movement, interstate lockdown. They would have done better if they had provided services for the people of the Niger Delta by even providing palliatives, not to themselves, but to the people of the Niger Delta and to the states that comprise the uh, Niger Delta Development Commission as member states. But unfortunately, they did not do that. They were all self-serving, and which is what has brought us to where it has brought us today. Apart from calling for the disbandment of the Interim Management Committee, the report recommended the establishment of monitoring and advisory committees. The Commission to henceforth report directly to the President, review its corporate social responsibility and procurement process. Senate resolved that the Interim Management Committee should refund a total of 4.9 billion naira paid to staff and contractors in breach of procurement process. This includes the 1.4 billion naira it paid to its staff as palliative for COVID-19. The funds are to be returned to the coffers of the Commission. The recommendations, recommendation one, for the purpose of consistency and equality of policy, there is a need to review the inconsistencies and differences in the apex control of these development commissions. In retrospect, the original arrangement of putting these commissions in the presidency should be carefully reconsidered to allow for direct presidential oversight in view of the huge public resources allocated to them. Section 7, subsection 3 of the NDDC Act already provides for this presidential supervision. So those in favor of uh, the recommendation one, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those in favor of recommendation two as amended, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Recommendation three, inauguration of other accountability mechanisms. The monitoring committee and the advisory councils should also be inaugurated along with board of directors as provided in sections 20 and 21 of the NDDC Act. This is necessary to ensure that there are sufficient checks and balances in the internal affairs of the NDDC. Those in favor of this recommendation say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes are. Recommendation four, improvement of governance and processes. This new board should be made to undertake a review of the existing governance framework with attention to upgrading the way and manner the board excuses its mandate with a view to establishing a new culture in the organization. The review must bring order to the workings of the management and their control of the organization. This is necessary for the improvement of the structures and processes of the NDDC, especially having witnessed two interim managements with seemingly loss of control on projects and staff expenditure. Those in favor of recommendation four say aye. Those against say nay, the aye side. Recommendation five, that NDDC manager must henceforth promote the use of his approved annual budget as the principal instrument and authorization for all his expenditures. The testimonies from public hearing give sufficient insight into NDDC's disregard for his budget, as several expenditure items were done without reference to budget provision. As at the time of writing this report, the ad hoc committee's request for, for a report of budget performance from the NDDC, NDDC has not been provided. Those in favor of recommendation five say aye. Those against say nay, the aye side. Recommendation six, submission of quarterly and annual performance report that NDDC be reminded of its responsibility to submit its quarterly and annual performance reports as and when due as stipulated in sections 19 and 20 of the NDDC Act. Such submission must also be duly passed to both houses of the National Assembly as stipulated in the law. Those in favor of recommendation six say aye. Those against say nay, the aye. Recommendation seven, initiation and supervision of forensic audit. In order to ensure that the forensic audit achieves the purpose for which it is set up and inspire confidence in the operational and financial process of NDC oversight of the audit should be transferred to the office of the Auditor General of the Federation. This will guarantee independence, credibility, transparency, and professionalism in the output of the exercise. 
Furthermore, the committee recommends that the president will advise from the auditor general should appoint a renowned internationally recognized forensic audit to carry out the exercise. Actually, this, this is a constitutional provision, really, because the auditor general's office audits the MDS, but in the case of corporations and commissions like this, he selects from a list of uh, audit, auditors or auditing firms and or gives the okay for them to, to audit and then he takes the report. So this is in line with the constitution, actually. It's not the ministry or the IMC that will say these are the auditors to do the forensic audit. You can't be auditing yourself. Those in favor of this uh, recommendation say aye. Those again say nay, the ayes have it. Recommendation eight, strengthen of procurement process that the NDDC must strengthen its procurement department through appropriate staff engagement, e.g. by appointing staff with procurement chartered status, staff training and formulation of appropriate industry rated internal control measure of specifics to procurement function to forestall sharp practice in its bids and tender processes. Process. There are assertions of blackmail by NDDC against members of the National Assembly on the subject of procurement process. This must be investigated and if found true, the process must be stopped. Well, I think I would suggest that um, the latter part be also uh, a recommendation rather than part so that we give it uh, a, a, some prominence rather than just merging it with uh, it's, it's such an important issue that we cannot just make it secondary. So can we separate that? Those who have that we aggregate recommendation 8 into 8 and 9 say aye. Those against any the eyes. So recommendation eight will stop at and tender process. Those in favor of recommendation eight, the new recommendation eight say aye. Those against any the eyes have. And recommendation nine will be there are assertions of blackmail by NDDC against members of the National Assembly on the subject of procurement process that this must be investigated and if found true, the practice must be stopped. Those in favor of our new recommendation nine say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those in favor of recommendation 10 as amended, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those in favor of recommendation 11 as amended, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Review of operation and processes. Standard operating procedures in the commission must be reviewed upgraded, reinstituted with full documentation and formal trainings conducted, then translated into readable materials and manuals for guidance of current and future staff of the Commission. That NDDC must engage a new governance system around projects and contracts from advert to award and then to delivery. This involves the pre and post implementation step to be taken for an effective delivery of projects. Those who have this recommendation say aye. Those again say need aye. Recommendation 13, review of financial stock accounting processes. That NDDC must review its financial system to ensure its adequacy in terms of controls and flexibilities with a view to ensuring that a robust financial report is produced out of the system at all times. This reform will also ensure that all compliance measures that fosters governance and accountability traits are captured in the system in form of coding of transactions hierarchy and skewed access stock control. Those in favor of recommendation 13 say aye. Those again say nay the ayes have. Recommendation 14, review of human resources policy. That the management must agree a policy to refocus the staff and management of the NDDC based on its core mandate. This will be a blend of human resource reform and training. This reform must lead to a robust organogram based on staff need. It must also cover the engagement of staff, staff orientation mandate, appraisal systems, and eventually severance of work relationship. Those who have recommendation 14 say aye. Those again say nay, aye. Recommendation 15, instituting performance-based organization. For NDDC to deliver on its mandate, it must immediately embark some of the processes associated with high performance organizations. This include target setting for employees, performance appraisal linked to the war system and the evolution of a new corporate culture. 
present attitude that tends to view the NDDC as a source of easy money must be discouraged. This attitude is also solely or closely tied to the narrative that has characterized succeeding management. It is akin to a self-fulfilling prophecy that in itself led to a vicious cycle that seems to suggest in courts we are financially imprudent because we operate in an environment of siege while we must continuously appease our stakeholders, end of court. But doing this as they de deprive the region of the needed development, which also reinforces restiveness and curse the siege environment. This cycle must be broken through a new culture and awareness by which the board and management of NDDC understands its responsibility to engender a new thinking and strong focus on infrastructure development of the region. A new approach to human resource management is desired. Those in favor of recommendation 15, say aye. Those against any the aye, sir. Recommendation 16, enforcement, enhancement of internal and external audit capacities. That management must review the service level agreement they currently hold with their external auditor with a view to making a change of auditor. There is a lot of merits in our opinion to change the external auditors given the level of systematic failures already listed in this report, some of which should have been resolved by an effective audit regime. Are those in favor of recommendation 16 say aye. Those against say nay, the aye seven. Recommendation 17, a review of corporate social responsibility policy CSR that the management embark on a CSR review to restructure and reshape NDDC's social responsibility to its staff, community, and the public at large in order to properly ensure an equitable and responsible delivery of these responsibilities without losing focus of its corporate mandate. The scope of this review should include condolences, community relations, and stakeholders' engagement. Those in favor of this recommendation say aye. Those against say nay, the aye seven. It's also mandated its committees on ethics privileges and public petitions to investigate alleged involvement of some members of the National Assembly in the Commission's contract awards. So we are giving them uh, four weeks, the Committee on Ethics and Privileges, within which to report their findings. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished colleagues, and let me join uh, colleagues who contributed by also commending the chairman and uh, members of the ad hoc committee. Uh, that did this investigation. And I want to say that this Senate, and indeed this National Assembly, has always been sensitive and responsive to the earnings of the people of this country from any section. I recall that in 2000, the NDDC um, Act or Bill then had to be passed by the National Assembly through override of a presidential veto. In the same, to, in 2002, the National Assembly passed the bill to abolish the offshore and onshore dichotomy, just to give more resources to the states of the Niger Delta. In fact, those of us from the other parts of the country made a huge sacrifice because the offshore funds realizable from the sale of oil and gas would also go to our states ordinarily. But we still voted for the bill to abolish that so that more resources would go to the Niger Delta states for development. Most of our colleagues who contributed talked about the 13% derivation in the Constitution, the NDDC uh, itself, the Commission, the Ministry of uh, Niger Delta Affairs, the Amnesty Program, the Special presidential intervention. These are all efforts by government, and not only this administration, right from 1999, to ensure that special developmental attention is given to the Niger Delta area, because that is the goose that lays the golden egg. But alas, almost all through this period, those that have been given the responsibility to manage the resources of the NDDC and for the people of the Niger Delta have squandered most of the resources, leaving the region poor and in a very difficult situation. It is our opinion in the National Assembly, particularly in the Senate, that this report has exposed 
the inefficiencies, the the, 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 the kind of corruption in the, in the in the NDDC, and in fact the need to strengthen that organization. I want to I want to agree completely that we should look at the act itself, establishing the NDDC. Where are the lacunas or the inadequacies? And then we are on the same page with the executive arm of government on this, that the outcome of the investigations by the National Assembly from both chambers will be considered by the executive arm of government in order to bring sanity and relief, sanity in the NDDC and relief to the people of the Niger Delta. I am sure that our report will receive the kind of attention that we all desire and expect. With this, once again, let me thank uh, our committee, particularly the ad hoc committee, and of course the uh, our distinguished colleagues for the various uh, interventions. Well, this is where we end today's program from the National Assembly. I'm Ignatius Nkwo. Enjoy the rest of our programs.